Tech, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are celebrating 25 years of fun and madness and had a chance to celebrate with a whole bunch of our friends and clients and sponsors and neighborhood friends and old friends at Costas on Thursday, again at Drug City on Friday. We'll continue the celebration up in Hampstead this week at Carroll County. Guy on my Facebook said he's sick of my 25th anniversary. I said, then leave because you're going to get six more months. I'm going to be spiking the ball and dancing <laughs> like Rod Tidwell. And the reason for that is I read the clips from 25 years ago. So, you know, I'm st- it's, it's – it's fired me up, and I think Dennis Colazzo's felt a little bit of that when we were handing out those Maryland Lottery scratch-offs and talking about Window Nation and eating Crab Imperial and taking on gifts and telling old stories as he joined us at Costas the other day uh, for the uh, the Crab Imperial. What's going on, man? How are you selling cars over the weekend? Uh, I'll tell you what, it's um, the, the weather, it's great to have a top-off this time of year. Give me a convertible, yeah. Dan. Yeah, great time of the year. We're selling lots of cars Uh my nephew had a baby shower, with, uh, which was yeah, new to me. Men typically don't go to these things, but these days it's a joint venture. So Did they do the thing where they shoot the, the blue or the pink, or did, is it all over with? Did they do all they that? They already did it a couple of months ago. But, what do uh, they we call it? Reveal? Reveal? Reveal, the reveal. But we have another baby Colossos joining us in September at some point. So uh, Orioles are winning. We're selling cars, uh, celebrating your 25th at Casa's Inn. It was very much a celebratory weekend, Nestor. I just feel really good. I'm feeling warm and fuzzy these days. Well, when you got together with Mr. Kostas and it started, it was all Greek to me. I mean, because it was Greek. <laughs> it was all Greek. And we extended the party. We paid him a visit over the weekend again and just had a lovely time. Jumbo crabs and those uh, Rockefeller oysters were just amazing. Just a great service and the great people over there. I'm just going to say, you've been to Kostas twice. In when games were in progress and the Orioles are two and zero, I'm just saying. I'm just, just saying. saying just so saying. starting off, so we got a couple days here with the Astros, right? And I, I just want to ask you this because you've been sponsoring us for 20 years. We had our fun, you know, talking about crabs and crab cakes and anniversary and all that. We're back to like it's August. They're in first place. They haven't lost in a week. The Astros, cheating Astros are coming in here. And then they're going to do, like, the West Coast all-nighters. Now, as Luke pointed out, at least these things aren't starting at 1135 like they used to 100 years ago. The games get going at 930, you know, to to make it happen. But we're going to watch baseball on the West Coast. And the Ravens are playing these sham games, trying not to get hurt. We're trying to figure out who the left guard's going to be and where the running back's going to be. Where's your focus in the sports thought right now i mean there's room for two teams in philadelphia they got four teams and college teams Uh, and all that there's room here for the orioles and the ravens but there's only really oxygen the ravens aren't getting oxygen right now and it's the first time in august they've suffocated in a long long time uh, well competition is good right so hopefully the ravens will step up their game nester but if if 60 is a new 50 then uh 9 p.m is my new midnight so these late late games (laughs) They're going to take their toll on me, but boy, oh boy, it's been a lot of fun watching the Orioles. I haven't had as much luck at the stadium. I'm one in five uh, when I've attended the games. So I've had more luck at Casa Zen than I've had at Camden Yards, but it feels good. I I, I don't recall in, in the history of, of doing the, uh, my show, Nestor, that I've spent as much time as I have talking about the Orioles, but boy, they're gritty. They're fun to watch. Man, oh man, this is great having a, Having a playoff caliber team been since what 2016, the last time the the club was sniffed the playoffs. The real build build has been slow and tedious, but it's certainly paying dividends right now. Well, the '79 season was magical for me. I was 11 years old. I went to 31 straight games before they lost. Wow. Amazing. I was 31 and 0 that year. I finished the year 38 and 4. Uh, I was at um I was at the World Series game that they one of the ones they lost. Um, but, and then, in, you know, I think about 89 and I told my wife this when we were over on your side of town, do you remember the Chi Chi's used to sit in the parking lot at Westview? Remember this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Of course. That, that Chi Chi's was good luck in 89. My, my girlfriend then was a girl named Wendy. Uh, this was the girl from upstate New York. She, and we, we were living together summer of 1989 and we would go over to Chi Chi's and watch the Orioles play because it's the only place in town other than like the Hacienda, you could get chips and salsa. We're talking 35 years ago. And we decided to watch the ill-fated Greg Olson game at Chi Chi's that night after we were on a winning streak. So it doesn't hold up. 
I mean, it worked for a long time, and then it didn't work in 89. I'm not stupid-stitious about any of this, but I am realistic about what they're doing and the lead they're extending and the confidence level the fan base is starting to pick up when the 83 Orioles come back, and it's nice that Rick Dempsey's to still spell Orioles sure. and do the Wild Bill Hagee thing, but then the crowd that's there leaves with a victory, with a night, with a bobblehead, Eddie Murray, that really for the young people, for you and me, we know Eddie Murray. I don't need anybody to tell me which one was Renicky and which one's Len Sakat. I don't need – but your kids, the kids is kids, anybody that even – I thought about this with Free the Birds. I did Free the Birds 17 years ago. If you're 25 years old and drinking beer, you know, you were six years old, seven years old when I did Free the Birds. Uh, you have no idea about Boog Powell or Brooks Robinson, no. let alone Eddie Murray and Cal Ripken's like this mythical figure that you saw in Cooperstown because that was now 16 years ago. I mean, Cal hasn't played in 22 years. So uh, there, there's a point where the current guys, and when I see the ball, ballpark and I see Rutschman jerseys and I see Henderson jerseys and I, I, th this is the new renaissance and I haven't been down there lately I went opening day I mean I watch them every day but it, it's magic to watch yeah. my friends like you and even on Drug City on Friday I had Bill Yerman everybody came we're all talking about the Orioles everybody's wearing an Oriole hat that's why I did Free the Birds because this has been the thing that was missing from our city. This was the missing piece, like the Colts when they left, the Ravens were, you know, they filled a void here. There's been an empty spot for baseball here for so, so long that this is, this is enjoyable. I am bummed that there's no game on Monday night. I'll be bummed Thursday when they play at lunchtime and the game's over and I don't have a game to watch on Thursday night. Yeah, no, but I'm not sure that, that young people share your passion or my passion that we've had for, for sports. Case in point, I was talking to a, a young man who just graduated college, Division One athlete. He had no idea who Jimmy the Greek was. He had no idea about the great 85 Bears and their defense, right? So when, when you talk to these young people, they have these epiphanies and revelations about what it was and, and stuff that you and I talk about. So I just don't know that they have the same passion that you and I have for the history well, think, of it, right? For the history, you're and I'll think that, yeah, and and th not just for the history, but for all things that are sport. You and I'll go back and take a look at the old film, and we used to like the, we watched J the great Jim Brown play, and and all these clips we can get from the uh, from baseball, right? But I just think they just have so much to look at, so many things they're streaming. Their attention span isn't what ours, ours was back then because we had less to focus on, and now they have all these images and all these things uh, hitting them all at once. I just don't know what you know where where their focus is. And I also I have a different level of expectation for the baseball team and for the football team for the six hundred million dollars they're given the stadium because too too much is given, much is expected, right? So I I have a different feeling about what it represents for the city. But on a Saturday night when I'm 150 miles away in a vineyard up in the middle of Pennsylvania, watching the sunset, looking down on my phone, seeing Rick Dempsey spell out Orioles, seeing, you know, what's going on and then seeing the score, you know, watching the score as the evening, uh, you know, and seeing how crowded it was, seeing that wild set of blue down in left field with all the Mets fans kind yeah. of taking over the way as Ravens fans, we would take over almost like, like a college football game uh, to, to some degree, but I, I, I love that for the city. I, I didn't fight with Peter Angelos or the Orioles on my own behalf of what they've done to me. I did it on behalf of living on the 23rd floor downtown in 2003, 4, 5, and 6 and saying, what are you doing to the city? The city deserves to be full on a Saturday night in the summer. The lights deserve to be turned on. Restaurants deserve to be full because to whom much is given, much is expected. And that's that's. That should have been expected all along, and that's where my angst comes in, but it is very, very heartening. Now, we could talk about the lease. We could talk about the price of playoff tickets. We could talk about um, buying season tickets in the future or who's going to support baseball or whether they're going to give Gunnar Henderson money or Adley Rutschman, but in the here and now, there, there's a game tomorrow night, the next night, in the afternoon, on the weekend – and they're relevant games. Every one of them's relevant, and they're 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 building something that is creating a bandwagon that is forty years long, right? I mean, and 
Dennis, I was in a vineyard in Sunbury, Pennsylvania. So if you go to Harrisburg, and by the way, what a pretty, pretty drive to go up uh, to 11 Harrisburg? or 15, anywhere north of Harrisburg. You talk about fishing yeah. and water and boats and rocks and fjords and green and hills and bridges and all of that. We drove 100 miles north, and I'm up in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, and I'm at a Pat Benatar concert in a little vineyard. There might have been – um I don't know, 3,000 people there, maybe 2,500 people. It was literally in a pasture. It was like Woodstock, right? You park your car on some grass, you walk past the farm, and you're there. And I saw a dozen Oriole hats. I mean, that night, okay. just that night, everybody who is an Orioles fan is 150 miles from here had Oriole hats on. I, I was blown away by that. York, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg. I got out at the rest stop, used the bathroom, Oriole hat. I'm seeing Oriole hats everywhere. Oh. And I can't wait to go to Ocean City next week. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I have some friends that were vacationing in, at Myrtle Beach, and they said they saw about two dozen Orioles uh, hats and shirts or whatnot. So it's 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 everywhere. People have a lot of pride. And uh, Sunday, we were at Costa's Inn cracking open hard shells, and there were points of the game during the game where – People were cheering, and when uh, Batista got the last out, the applause went on between 45 seconds and 60 seconds. We we cheered. It was like winning out. a playoff game, kind of, right? It was, fa it was just fantastic, and I can't tell you the last time I had that kind of an experience, and it was wonderful. I And I think enough said on that, because like that yeah. says it all, that if you're in a bar in Dundalk on a Sunday afternoon and the Orioles close out a game to hear applause, like – I don't know the last time – I don't remember that in 12 or 14 or 16. Maybe in 14 because they were good at the end or, you know, like that. But, like, it's it's rare. It's rare after it's spending stuff. three decades being geeked up about the football team that only plays for three hours a week a, a third of the year. Like, you know, so th this is a different vibe where they're going to play six games this week and then six games next week. Before the Ravens even think about getting to the field, they're, they're going to play 25 more games. And that's what we love about sports, I think, is that every day there's a different chance to win. That was that was the whole body clock that I was raised with in the 70s as a baseball fan in this city. It's 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 what I knew until Angelos bought the team, honestly. Yeah, you have to love the storylines. We had Buck Walter uh, come home this weekend and. They played a nice video of appreciation up on the, on the Jumbotron for him. And the, the home fans cheered him on, and he tipped his hat. So, And then we went and, and just wiped out and swept the Mets. So we did our all, best to get him fired. We did our best. We contributed to it anyway. But it, it, it just goes to show you the, class, the classiness of the fans of Baltimore and, and what they thought of Buck and the appreciation in showing their, their appreciation to the second winningest coach, manager rather, in, uh, in the Orioles history. Yeah, I brought this up with Luke earlier in the week. By the way, Dennis Colazzo's here. He'll be back here uh, 3 until 5 on Thursday, again on Sunday morning as part of the Sunday Sports Voice. And of course, you can always find Dennis out at uh, Coons Baltimore Ford Security Boulevard anytime. Our WNST Tech service, hopefully with no injuries from Owings Mills. Yeah, I was talking to Luke about this a little bit too. Uh, and Because he was down in the midst of all of it over the weekend. Black jerseys and Rick Dempsey and like all of that. That the stadium became a tough place for the Mets on Friday and Saturday. And I always go back to that, that Pedro Martinez opening day game in 04 that we were pissed off by then. The team stunk for five years. The football team had won the Super Bowl. All of my young Tony Della Rosa beer buddies were still in their 20s and 30s to get raucous. We were a football town with a chip on our shoulder. We're pissed at Angelos, pissed at Albert Bell. You know, Cal's gone. The team stinks. All of that was going on. Will we ever win again? But there was a night where a football crowd showed up on an opening day night game on ESPN, and they chant 50,000 people chanting, Who's your daddy at Pedro Mar? I mean, taunting a Hall of Fame pitcher on the mound at Camden Yards. The crowd on Saturday night, the Mets, we had a big crowd and lost that the game of 4th of July weekend. Didn't play well that week against the uh, the Twins. I remember that. But when you get a big crowd down there, and there aren't going to be many of them. I mean, they gave away Eddie Murray. They spent six months trying to get a sellout. They got one, and there were 5,000 Mets fans there. But I'm thinking about game one, 
three, whatever the game is that we'll have the first playoff game. And the place is going to be salty. The first playoff round, everybody will put their 150, 200 bucks in to get a ticket to go down there to a game. I don't know if that's going to happen once it starts stacking up and October starts costing people five, six, eight thousand dollars to go to World Series games if if it becomes that. But I think that the first couple of games, there's going to be a tone setting for our fan base, for our football fans, and our long pent up Delman Young Oriole fans to create these moments like that raucousness with Rick Dempsey spelling Orioles, that the roar from 30, that 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 thing where you hear the echo off the warehouse. We ain't had a whole lot of that. I mean, I haven't been yeah. full enough to hear that. I don't even I, – I hear the echo of Memorial Stadium in my soul. I don't – we haven't had that other than Delman Young, right? I mean, a little bit. Even Cal 2131, it wasn't like a roar. But, like, those kinds of roars with fans and this pitch clock and the way we run the bases, home games need to – we can't lose home games in the playoffs. You know, home field advantage in a football town might really – be something at a night game against the Astros or whatever it will be on October the whatever day it will be. I, I really am looking forward to that because I think we can make this place inhospitable. Well, that's the idea. And tell me the last time the Orioles have had truly a home field advantage. And I think that's, that's, uh, you know, the fans have to show up, whether they're football fans, or baseball fans, whatever, show up, represent, give the team a whole, a true home field advantage, make it difficult for the opposing team pitcher and everything else that they bring to the table and uh, and just have a lot of fun. And I do think fans are going to show up for the playoffs. I think it's going to be very, very loud. And it's, and it's about time, you know, that the, uh, the Orioles put together a product on the field that's representative and that way fans, a product that fans can support guys like myself who've been on the fence for many years, casual fans, that uh, when you give us a good product, we'll show up and support it 100%. Well, and the other part of that is when the stadium's full and everybody's paid all this money and they're going to play the national anthem and the bunting's going to be out. And again, Dennis, it's it's mid-August, okay? Luke tells me we're 95%. That that That's the betting, 95% to play playoff games here, okay? So, like... When I start talking about saving money and what I saw over the weekend and a full house and we're going to compete with each other for tickets, Leonard Raskin asked me, how much you think the tickets are going to be? I'm like, start with Taylor Swift and Springsteen and Beyonce and think about it in terms of there's not going to be a ticket price. There's going to be a bidding process because that's sure. the way tickets work these days. So when you see those $850 Springsteen tickets five minutes after they go on sale – they're trying to see if somebody will buy them for $850. And if they don't, maybe you'll get a chance at six and a quarter in an hour or two. So that's the way it works. And I'm thinking to myself, people are going to be geeked up. They're going to be into it. They're going to make noise. But the stadium's going to be different from first pitch where 48,000 people are glued on it because you're sitting on the edge of your seat, right? Two strikes, it's going to be a hellhole. You, you know, if Flaherty's the first game starter or Gibbs, whoever it's going to be, right? First batter, two strikes, everybody on their feet, and it's going to be three hours of that. And sure. I don't know that even Ed Lauer, who was with me on Thursday, who's Mr. Oriole, he's been to 60 games a year watching them get their ass kicked for 20 years. I don't think he even understands how loud it's going to be. Unless you've been to football games and Pittsburgh's in in the final two minutes of a tie game on third day, you know, like – that, that roar we're used to hearing in the football season, stadium that we've all made for years and years, that's going to come to the baseball stadium in a way that I think Saturday night was a little bit of a precursor for that. It, it sort of warmed me up for – this is going to be different in October here this year. I really do. I think – I believe that. Well, I love – you have to love the aggressiveness and the youth of this team. I saw Gunnar Henderson uh, during Sunday's game. They had a man in first and third. He might have been in first – and uh, the next batter was a third out. And you could just tell he was upset. He was pissed off. So I, I do think I love the personality of this team. I think it matches the city. I love the youth. I love the enthusiasm. I love what you got to love what they're doing. They're winning series. They're, what, 28, 29 games, over 500. Uh, and they're also young enough that I don't think they know any better. I, I they're, they're just <laughs> just to win the game. And uh, hopefully it'll hit them after they've won a World Series, which I think they have a legitimate shot of, of doing. Well, you know, for old guys like you and me, watching 
the 83 World Series team. And I saw Palmer there who got his in 66 and got it again in 83, kind of like Ray Lewis, right? Like literally. And I would say to anybody, Jim Palmer's the greatest athlete that's ever played in this city. No offense to Ray Lewis or or Brooke, Hall, anybody. Hall of, Johnny, Jim, Hall of Famer Jim Palmer. Hall of, and, and, well, I, Hall of Famer. He, he'll let you know that. Um, so I see Palmer on the one side of the picture. I see Eddie in the middle. I see Cal. And I think to myself, Eddie came up 77, 78, disappointment in 79. He didn't play well in the 79 World Series as well. You can look that up. Eddie had to deal with that, the race, all the things that first million dollar player, but all of that that Eddie dealt with. And he won and then went on his way to doing, you know, played in the World Series with the Indians years later, Dodgers, all of that, right? Eddie had his own path and left. I don't know where Henderson and Rutschman and where Holiday, who's going to be the next guy into this and where the Westbrooks and the Westbergs and the Cowsers. I mean, all of these little Robin Younts and little Don Baylors and baby birds and all, you know, like young Gunnar Henderson's like a Robin Yount. He's so young when he comes up that Cal won as a baby in 83 and never tasted it again. You, you know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking to myself, this is where Rutschman is right now. Rutschman is exactly where Cal was. Second year, Coming on, MVP candidate kind of guy. Uh, you know, Eddie and Cal fought for the MVP. And Eddie, I mean, Eddie, Eddie yeah. kind of got screwed. Um, not Eddie got screwed. Cal would probably tell you that. So this, it's important to win because it's not given to you. And I'm sure seeing Ripken and Murray, somebody said to Henderson, Rutschman, hey, you know, they won in the, they won early and then they didn't win again. This isn't a this isn't a dress rehearsal. You know, this is not a dress rehearsal, and John Angelo should not be taking it that way. And Michael, I'm, as a fan, I'm not taking it that way. Tomorrow is never promised. A one seed is definitely never promised. That's earned. And this team's out there earning that right now. They're earning the right to take days off. They're earning the right to play important games at home. They're earning the right to be the top seed. And... That's a daily thing that we don't have to believe in that anymore to say, are we going to make the playoffs? Can we buy? They're 95% to make the playoffs. They got a three game lead in the toughest division in baseball. And it's late August. It's, it, it it's no. not, a, it's real. It's not a dress rehearsal. This is real. No, it's real. It was great to see the 83 Orioles, Eddie, Cal, my good friend, Al Bunbury, who's uh you know, who stops by the dealership about once or twice a month that we sit down and talk and we, uh, I get to pick his brain about uh, baseball and the team and the Angelos family. And we always have a, it's always an illuminating conversation with Al. So it's just a great, great time to be an Orioles fan. Great time to be in Baltimore. We have the Orioles, we have the Ravens who are uh, about to embark on their season. So uh, intermingled with, uh, with potential, highly potential uh, Orioles playoff baseball. How about that? We haven't said that in a long, long time. I got to get Al Bumbry out and have him on the show. I'm going to call Singy. Al, I saw Al him all. A... I got to get Al to get a crab cake with me. I really do. I'll send you his cell number. He's just a really good man. And, oh, you know, I, I, I love star, it. I mean, you know, serving the nom, just, just salt of the earth type of a guy. He just he's amazing. the best. And he is. I had a conversation um, with someone who wasn't old enough to know, somebody a little younger than me. I don't remember where it was last week. And they're like, this is the greatest Oriole crop ever, 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 ever. And I'm <laughs> like, they had to stink for five years to get these guys. And that, and that's Great. cool. But yeah. I'm old enough that as a very, a, a little boy, and you were just getting to this country, 72, 73, 74. 73, yeah. yeah so, so when you arrived in this country in 73, Al Bumbry was only like, he wasn't even thought to be the guy. Coggins was the better player for one year, and Don Baylor was going to be an MVP and wound up being an MVP, right? But at that time, Bumbry, Coggins, Baylor, Gritch, Belanger was coming. They made the deal for Earl Williams. They had a they they had a guy named Jim Fuller that was supposed to hit 50 home runs. They, they had a really intense period in the early seventies where they had great players. They had the senseis coming up. They had a lot of guys that made a lot of money. Wayne Garland, they had pitchers at that point. They were about to make the deal with the Yankees for McGregor and Flanagan and Tippy. That happened on the, you know, a couple years later, but right before then, before free agency, right around 73, 74, 75, that was the last time 50 years ago that we had anything like a cupboard of young right. players. And I've been monitoring this on the air for 31 years where, I mean, 
Earl Weaver's whole philosophy was every year we're going to put a, a, a young player on the field and, and grow into that player. Whether that player was Gritch, Bumbery, Coggins, Baylor, Murray, Ripken, or some failed great, players. Great philosophy. Great philosophy. Bob Bonner, sure. Bob Baylor, Bob, you know, uh, Drungo Hayeswood, Jim Fuller, you know, guys that failed but were on that, that rookie card as a future star. Not all of them made it. Richie Dower. Oh, my. Can I do a minute on Rich Dower? Sure. Because he was missing from the picture. Right. As was Mike Flanagan, Sammy Stewart, some others that that have left us in the 83 team. And I knew Rich had had serious health issues. I'd read about it. I don't understand how a major league player who played a dozen years in the big leagues, who served 30 years now as a coach, that he needs a GoFundMe page to take care of his medical. Like, I, I'm I'm blown away by that. And Rich Dower's played for these billionaires, and, you know, and managed and, and, and coached. Colorado, Houston, Milwaukee, he's been all over the place. But Rich Dower was my father's favorite player. And my father loved Rich Dower because my father followed the minor leagues, right? Like, I'm five years old in 73, 74, 75. So I'm telling you, Bumbry and Coggins, I remember those years, Baylor, all of that, right? But Dower was a triple crown winner at, at Rochester. He 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 led the trip, AAA in batting average, home runs, and RBIs when he came up in '76. Gritch was in his way, right? At that, Gritch was a shortstop that got moved out because of Belanger, right, to second base. And Dower came in. He never went to the Hall of Fame or did anything like that. But he was the gold. He was the gold standard. He was the Jackson Holiday right. of, of that era to make it. And he made it. He played 12 years in the big leagues. Like saying BJ Searle was the number one pick. He didn't make. Played 15 years in the big leagues, didn't go to the Hall of Fame, but went to the Hall of – played in the big leagues for a long, long time. Rich right. Dower was one of my favorites, and, and he was missing. I want to give a little piece of my heart because I know he's struggling. His family's struggling right now. That's a shame. Uh, well, also, the money isn't uh, – wasn't then what it is now, right? So a lot of the a lot of the old times will be quick to tell you that they can't believe uh, the kind of money these players are making these days. Well, I'll tell you what, I can't wait to have a crab cake without Bumbry. I hope he's not, um, um, you know, shellfish intolerant or something no, like that. No, no, uh, he, he likes crabs. I'll he's, get him a burger a Bal- then if he's that's a Bal- fine. He's a Baltimorean all the way through and through. I've had Al on the show many times. He's come over to the station at Robbie's, I, all of that. It's just yeah. been too long. And if I've learned anything in the last 26 minutes, Dennis, it's that I need to get together with Al Bumbry. How about that? If I've taken anything. You know what? Uh, it'll be good for both of you. It would it would be really good for me. So tell them. So hey, uh, cars. Uh, what what do we got? Anything? Hey, uh, you got you got one point nine percent for sixty months on the twenty twenty three Ford Mach E. So that's a great great deal. One point nine percent for sixty. We have some great lease deals on F one fifty six fifty. What's a Mach E? Tell everybody what a Mach E. It's an electric. Is. It's an electric Mustang. Is what it is. It's an SUV. Uh, zero to sixty in about three seconds. It's just a phenomenal vehicle. Great range and one point nine for sixty. That's a deal. That sticker me on that. Money. What's the sticker looking like mm. on that base? 35, 40, right around there. So nice, you nice need vehicle. my wife to test drive it. Is that what you're telling me? Oh. Yeah, she'll she'll get uh, she'll get back home and, and to work very, very fast. How about so that? give me the electric car thing, because like we were up in Pennsylvania and I, you think to yourself, like, where am I going to do this? Where? So, you know, I'm staying at a Fairfield in Sealands Grove, Pennsylvania. How do I charge my car? Well, they have charging stations everywhere. And right now they're they're able to use a tesla charger so now you have a nationwide uh, array of chargers you're a program you're, a real program yeah right? man i'm telling you so it's just this thing is just it's it's not going backwards it's it's taken off and it's the future and uh this is the the next step before we start hovering before we get to hovercrafts that go above ground and we become just like the jetsons nothing less man your boy elroy you know that's what i elroy, need I, uh... I tried living in the sky for 20 years and thinking that, you know, Jane and Elroy and they, they were all, it didn't work that way. I came back down to the ground uh, and here I am. Dennis Colazzos will be here on Thursday from three until five. I will be joining him as will Luke. Uh, also on Sunday morning, as you all know, uh, eight until noon. And of course the sponsor of our WNST tech service over Coons Baltimore Ford, uh, where they have great deals and I need to get a mock I need to figure, you know, I, you could teach an old dog new tricks. I mean, at some point in my life, I need to own an electric vehicle, right? I mean, you know, you will, I'm you will, you will just look, it's just, uh, it's going to go the way of the telephone, right? Rotary phone and flip phone. And now we got, uh, we got computers in our, in our, in our hip pockets. So that's the way uh, life is. That's the way we progress. 
Dennis, every August, I put myself on the road eating crab cakes on the back roads of Maryland. Oh. And this this August, I didn't do that. And, you know, and I'm OK because it was marathon. I mean, I did 30 days and 31 days. It was a hell of a commitment. Did it, yeah. ate it, gained a little weight, lost it, did all that. This year, I'm not doing that. But I went up to Pennsylvania the other day. And it's amazing when you start driving and you don't have cell phone service. How oh, it is like you start to get edgy, you know, because you, you, things aren't working. My wife's driving I'm like cell phones not you know it's it, oh. it is amazing and i think the electric car thing's one of those things it's gonna get your head around it a little bit that's all before we go that peach cake was amazing that you gave me the other day it was uh the greatest thing ever it was you see the, this empty plate here this used to be peach oh. cake let me this, tell you something it, it, for, for our listeners if you hadn't had peach cake you haven't lived it was the uh, one of the top three of things i've ever tasted that's for just so you know it lasted two days are you serious house. yeah it was that good two days it lasted in our household i mean i don't know crumbs. where it went I got a couple of pieces of it, though, but it was delicious. Just All so. right. Listen, uh, next weekend, I'm going down to the beach. I'm going to be at Mako. Um, I am going to do all I can do to stop and get you a proper gold watermelon from the yeah, Eastern Shore. Now, okay. I, I tested one. You. I've been testing one from the last trip a couple weeks ago. I. Uh, Thumbs up on this place here. All right. Wise Markets also sponsors all of our Wise Conversations. Now I got crumbs in my mouth. See what you did to me? Call your buddies at Wise Market, by the way. I know mm -hmm. you know a guy there. And uh, see what they can do about some golden melon. Uh, there's a wise across the street from my security boulevard, a wonderful wise, super clean. It's huge. Super full. My favorite uh, grocery store by far. Love to see some gold melon in that store. Oh, there we go, man. Laying down the gauntlet on gold melon. Let's They're, go. Listen, Let's go. if we tell everybody about the gold melon, they'll eat it all and there won't be any one left for us, you know. So um, <laughs> Dennis Colazos is here. Uh, you can find him there over Coons Baltimore Ford Security Boulevard, as well as on the front of Baltimore Positive. Uh, we had a, a spirited conversation last week as well about the football and um, – and, and love and life here in Baltimore on our 25th anniversary over at Costas. Big appreciation for everybody that joined us. You'll be hearing it all week here at WNST. Luke's at the ballpark. Luke's in Owings Mills. I'm locked out at home planning 25 years of madness and stories of glory. We are WNST, AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking. Baltimore, positive. Gold watermelon and peach cake. Playoff baseball.